All right, so when it comes to new systems, we've got the system development life cycle and we've got project planning, uh, but we also have to consider the organizational impact of the system. And one of the first things to consider there is, well, what are the people going to think about this new technology coming at them? Davis did a study way back when, and it was based on psychological research uh, using the theory of reasoned action or theory of planned behavior. Basically, wanted to see what people thought about new systems or new technology as they had a chance to look at it. And what he found was that people's intentions to use new technology is basically a function of well, how useful is it going to be to me? And how easy will it be for me to use? So that intention to use then translates to the behavior. How much do we actually use it? So this was something that was useful and led to some pretty good project management techniques that we were able to utilize to help companies figure out how to put new technology in place and bring their employees on board with it when they did so. Now, of course, it's not necessarily that simple. How many of you intended to use SAP, for example? Or for that matter, how many of you intended to use Access? So it's not always just, well, how useful is it going to be to me? How easy is it going to be for me? It may not be completely an individual decision. So this is where later on uh, Venkatesh and a bunch of other people came up with uh, a study that looked at a lot more things and they saw that there was a lot more that came into play there. First of all, we have the performance expectancy and the effort expectancy. So that's your ease of use and usefulness from before. So we still have those, but then we also see social influence comes into play. I have uh, had to experience that. I made my son uh, have a, an older phone for a number of years. He didn't like it too much. Uh, he probably was the only kid in his school that had a Windows phone, and he wanted an iPhone. Well, iPhones are great. Android phones are great. Windows phones were fine. You know, they, they did everything you needed to. You could make calls, you could message, uh, they had apps and all that. But all of his friends had iPhones. He wanted an iPhone. They were popular. And, and there's nothing really that you can't do on an iPhone, that you can do on an iPhone that you can't do on an Android phone. So social influence led him to want an iPhone and uh, eventually we got him an iPhone. All right, so social influence can come into play other facilitating conditions. And then you can see gender, age, and experience. Most of those don't play a big role anymore. Men and women of all ages now have uh, been interfacing with technology for a significant amount of time now. So you'll see some pretty good technological literacy you know, among all ages. Now, whether we all use the same apps, that's another story, but we all interface with technology and can use technology these days. Now, voluntariness of use plays a big role there, and you can see that plays a role in the social influence. And here, you go to work for a company, the company says, well, we use this, this, and this, so you're going to use this, this, and this, and guess what? You use those products, just like you had to use SAP and Access if you wanted uh, to get the best grade you possibly could in this course. All right, so voluntariness of use comes into play. Uh, so this model, obviously, it's more complicated than the uh, previous model. It shows that there's a lot to go that goes into how much we use and whether we use new technology. So usefulness and ease of use. How can companies go about addressing those perceptions when they want to put new technology, such as a new accounting system, in place? How can they help bring their organization on board? Also, how can they address ease of use? How can they convince employees, hey, this is gonna be good and it's going to be easy enough for you? So a lot of companies use uh, pilot groups and they will recruit people, influencers, if you will. So, so companies kind of use some of the same techniques 
that you will see on campuses where they identify, or even on social media, where they identify influencers and try and recruit them to be the face of the new project. Uh, they'll put uh, stories in their corporate newsletter or the blog that they send out uh, on a weekly basis to uh, employees to show what's going on, highlight the employees that are working on the new pilot project, and build enthusiasm throughout the organization as they show all the cool new things they can do with their new system. Or the same type of things you'll see in any ad for technology where you now, wow, you can uh, focus after you've shot the, the picture. That's great. So, same thing with uh, new accounting systems. How can you get companies or how can you get the employees excited about them? 